All right. Um, shall we wait for a couple of minutes or shall I get started? Uh, maybe a few minutes. Just All right. let's say two minutes. <laughs> I think I think we can start. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tobias, and I'm 23 years old and work as a student uh, research assistant at the University of Applied Science in Hamburg. And uh, today, I would like to present to you our findings on the simulation-based evaluation of a synchronous transaction model for time-sensitive software-defined networks. Um, Excuse me. <laughs> uh, the presentation is divided into four chapters. In the four, uh, first chapter, I would like to introduce some basic concepts uh, we've been using, like uh, time sensitive networking, software defined networking, and transactions. After that, um, I will talk about um, the concept uh, we created for the transaction model. And uh, then I would like to introduce you into our evaluation network and um, discuss the results from the evaluation. Uh, lastly, we will uh, draw our conclusions and take a look at future research topics. Okay, uh, before I get started, uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, uh, feel free to interrupt me and ask them. All right, um, time sensitive networking. Uh, the time Sensitive networking protocol um, is a collection of standards uh, specifically designed for industrial control equipment and vehicle communication networks. It is defined in the IEEE 802.q standard and supports Ethernet in real time environments through time synchronization and traffic prioritization. Um, furthermore, it's based on the Ethernet frame with QTAC holding a VLAN ID and a priority code point. And the picture below, you can see a standard Ethernet frame. Uh, that's the one on the top. And below that, you can see our Ethernet frame with the QT extension. Um, but uh, today, we are going to be focusing on um, something called uh, the frame selector, uh, which is a part of uh, the time sensitive networking. And um, as you can see, the frame selector has three logical components for each priority class we're using. We have eight different priority classes, starting with zero being the lowest and seven being the highest. Um, first logical component is um, a queue for buffering incoming frames. Uh, the next one is a transmission selection algorithm. This is used for selecting frames from the queue uh, that will be forwarded through the gate. And yeah, the gate is uh, the third part. Um, it has two possible states, it can be open or it can be closed. And we can time the, uh, the state changes from the gate using uh, something called a gate control list, which I will be uh, discussing on the next slide. Um, what happens if we have two gates open um, at the same time? This is also possible. Uh, then we will select the frame with the highest priority and forward it through um, the port. All right. Um, so. Um, in this diagram, we can see um, how our gate control list is working. We can see uh, for our gate control list, we define a cycle and we divide the cycle into uh, different time slots. In this example, we choose three time slots. Um, in the first time slot, um, we said that all priorities from zero to six are allowed to send uh, frames through the gate and just um, the gate from priority seven is closed. Uh, in contrast, um, the second uh, time slot, we close all gates. Um, we use it as a guard band. And, and the third one, uh, we open the gate with the highest priority. After that, uh, the cycle repeats continuously. Oh yeah, uh, just as a side note, uh, C of course means closed and green O means uh, open. 
Okay, uh, the next concept I want to talk about is uh, software-defined networking. Um, the basic idea of software-defined networking is uh, separating the control plane from the data plane. As you can see in this picture, we have uh, the control plane, which uh, is drawn in red, uh, combined with the data plane, uh, which is gray. And for SDN, we um, separate those two and combine the control plane into uh, one single point, uh, which is called uh, the SDN controller. And with the SDN controller, we are able to um, apply modifications to the network or install applications uh, that can steer the entire network from a single point. Um, yeah, uh, the last concept is transactions. Uh, the reason why we want transactions and why they are interesting for us is uh, because transactions offer us uh, the so-called asset properties. Uh, the asset properties um, mean that uh, we always uh, can transfer our system from one consistent state to another. And uh, yeah, this is achieved through those properties, atomicity, which just means that um, uh, a collection of modifications within a transaction will be treated as if, if is one transaction, uh, one, one modification. Uh, consistency means that we always, as I already mentioned, transfer our system from one consistent state to another. Isolation means that in the case of concurrency, um, our transaction will um, be processed as if uh, we are doing the transactions uh, in uh, a sequential manner. And durability means that um, the modifications we do during the transaction will be persistent until another transaction uh, will be executed. All right, um, now I would like to introduce you into um, the concept we use for our transaction model. Um, we divided onto our transaction model into four different phases. Uh, the first one is the log phase. The second one is the reconfiguration phase. The third one, the commit phase. And the last one is the unlocking phase. Um, all communication uh, during the transaction will be coordinated using uh, SDN flow. And the reconfigurations during the reconfiguration phase uh, will be transmitted using the NetConf protocol. Um, furthermore, uh, the commit phase is based on a two phase commit. And yeah, now I would like to take a more detailed look on how a transaction um, will be executed. For this, we have an example on the left side. Um, it shows how a successful transaction um, will be processed. And uh, yeah, the first phase, as already mentioned, is the log phase. During the log phase, uh, we have to acquire the logs for each uh, device we would like to modify within the network. And we have to contact them in a deterministic order. Uh, in our example, we use the MAC address uh, for establishing a deterministic order. Uh, the next phase is the reconfiguration phase. Um, during the reconfiguration phase, um, we have to instantiate a copy of the so-called running configuration. Uh, the running configuration is uh, the configuration that is currently active within the devices. And after we instantiated a copy, which is called the candidate configuration, we log it immediately after that. And then we can apply our modifications to the candidate configuration. Um, yeah, after that, uh, we start with the commit phase. And uh, the first thing we have to do during the commit phase is we have to calculate something called the worst case execution time. Uh, the worst case execution time is the sum from uh, all end to end latencies from the messages that will be exchanged during the commit phase and the um, processing time each device needs during this phase. Uh, when we calculated the worst case execution time, uh, we can calculate our uh, um, commit execution timestamp based on that. And this timestamp can either be a standard timestamp or it can be uh, the next network period when we can safely apply our changes. Um, yeah, so when we have the execution timestamp, we send it from the SDN controller to each switch within the network. And then the switches have to check um, if they will be able to accept the timestamp. In this example, each switch is able to accept the timestamp, uh, so they will send us an accept me uh, message back to our SDN controller, which in turn then uh, 
when he has collected all the accept messages from all switches that are participating, will send a release message, which uh, basically tells uh, the switches that they are now allowed to execute um, and activate the new configuration when they reach uh, the commit execution timestamp. In the last phase, um, we unlock all the locks uh, we acquired previously. Uh, during this phase, we don't have to adhere to a deterministic order uh, because it doesn't matter. The deterministic order at the beginning is just used to avoid uh, dead locks during the locking phase. All right. Um, yeah, now um, I would like to uh, explain to you uh, how we constructed our uh, evaluation work. Um, the evaluation network um, has uh, four different nodes, as you can see, and uh, three of those nodes are uh, allowed to send traffic um, to the fourth node, uh, which is our traffic sync. Um, all devices within the network um, use our TDMA schedule, which is repeating every millisecond. And um, yeah, the nodes start sending um, the traffic uh, with an offset of 100 milliseconds. We use that um, for uh, better uh, uh, seeing the, the changes and the effects of the um, reconfig uh, reconfigurations we do um, when we um, evaluate the network. So uh, what kind of uh, evaluations we are doing? Uh, we have to do two changes. Uh, the first one is we have to install a new flow to the switches, uh, which uh, tells them how to forward the packets from the node uh, to the traffic sync. And uh, then we also have to update the gate controller schedule so it can accommodate uh, another uh, Ethernet frame. And by the way, all Ethernet frames we are sending through the network are uh, full sized and uh, we send them every millisecond. Okay, um, so um, we um, reconfigured this network using two approaches. Uh, the first approach was a non transactional approach. Uh, the second one was using the transaction model um, I explained earlier. Uh, in this diagram, you can see the results for the non transactional approach. And uh, those two gray lines represent the two modifications we do for um, installing uh, the necessary uh, reconfigurations for the first flow. Uh, the second two li uh, gray lines represent the modifications we do for the second flow, and the third one, of course, uh, for the third flow. So as we can see, um, after we install the first flow, we have a constant latency. And um, right after we installed the second flow, the latency um, increases drastically. And when we install the third flow, it increases even further. Uh, to understand why this is happening, uh, we will take a more detailed look uh, into this diagram. So this is basically just a zoomed in version of the first um, diagram. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, the time frame we are observing is uh, when we uh, install the second flow here. So you can see um, the first modification we do is we add the flow to uh, the switch's flow tail. And uh, by the way, each, uh, each dot on the line represents a packet that will be sent. And as we can see, the first packet uh, from real-time flow two has the same latency as um, real-time flow one before uh, we did the modifications. But uh, then when real-time flow four sends its fourth package, uh, the latency suddenly increases. And the reason for that is um, that we haven't adjusted um, the schedule and the gate control list yet. So, Real-time flow one was taking up the spot that was supposed to be used by real-time flow. Uh, sorry, <laughs> real-time flow two took the spot that was supposed to be used by real-time flow one. Um, this is why we get um, increased latencies because uh, our system is in an inconsistent state um, during the modifications. So uh, not very good for real-time environments. Now let's take a look how the time synchronous transaction performs. Um, as we can see, we also have um, three modifications in total. Um, and the uh, latency, the anti end latency, stays consistent uh, during all the modifications we do. Uh, the only thing that uh, might be interesting or that might uh, spark your interest is that. Um, the time when we apply uh, our transactions 
is a little bit later than um, the time where we um, reconfigure our network and the non-transaction approach, as you can see. Uh, the first modifications in the non-transaction approach um, starts at around 0 0.1 milliseconds and in the transactional approach at 0 0.35 milliseconds. The reason for that is that we um, have to wait for the worst case execution time and we can just apply the transaction after we reach the worst case execution time step. Um, okay, so uh, now I would like to draw the conclusions and uh, discuss uh, future research topics. So uh, as we could see, uh, the non-transactional reconfigurations led to inconsistencies within our network, and those inconsistencies caused an increase in latencies. So uh, they are not suitable for real-time or for time-critical traffic. In contrast, uh, the time synchronous transaction uh, didn't affect the latencies of real time traffic. And therefore, uh, one could say that they may be suitable for time critical traffic. But um, to give a definite answer to that, uh, we have to do some a little bit more research. So, this is the part uh, where future work comes into play. Uh, we would like to investigate uh, the performance um, under more various forms of modifications. So as you might have noticed, we just added flows uh, to our network, but we didn't write uh, rerouting flows or removing flows. And yeah, we would like to try that and see how the performance um, varies from this um, evaluation. And we also would like to try um, different forms of synchronization. Uh, okay, uh, many thanks for your interest and attention. Uh, we will be now looking forward for your questions. Oh, and uh, by the way, uh, if you're interested, uh, we have, um, we will be soon having our uh, transaction model up on GitHub. Uh, here's a barcode and the link to the repository. Oops. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a, just one question, but I think I already can answer this. Uh, which uh, simulation framework are you using? Um, you, you... Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, of course, we uh, use the Omelette simulator uh, in the version 5.1.1. Uh, I mean, the, I mean the, the network models, like, I, I guess this is a core for INET, or is this? Oh, uh, yes, uh, the simulation model is based uh, on uh, core for INET and on SEM for core. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I was wondering how much, or if you, if it's even possible to measure how much extra Ethernet load there is from separating the control plane into a separate controller. Oh, well, that's a good question. Uh, honestly, uh, I'm guessing at the moment, is there some kind of sort of some genie that connects them and it's set it, they're connected outside of the Ethernet? Uh, or yeah, do they actually cool. communicate their state via Ethernet as well? Yeah, because it can yeah, influence would... the schedule. You you could you could show your your topology uh, picture again and then. Yes. Um, so. In this in this case the 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 SDN network is 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 separated from the. Uh, from the uh, uh, data network, I would say, switch switch one and two are the ones. Ah, it wasn't clear. Ah. Doing forwarding of of data and ah. and ETH switch and ETH switch two are just in. Oh, okay. I network. thought that they were part of the Ethernet yeah. network. It okay. Wasn't clear. So, no, it's okay now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, it'd be interesting to know. I mean, just possibly something you could do in the future is yeah. make it. You could you could also do this in line. It, it 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 is possible to have an SDN controller just in line. Then you have to do lo, lo, use the same lines as uh, as your data communication all, also, but. Um, but then you have yeah, to it's, it's very interesting how, how much how much traffic this would yeah. be. And you have this interferences even more and have to have have more problems also with uh, deterministic communication between the SDN controller and the switches <laughs> and all the all, all the things. And and as long as they, they have this uh, extra network, um you could even uh, uh, 
you have to, you don't have to use TSN in this extra network to all to to calculate your deterministic behavior because yeah. you are exclusive on this network. But if you are in line, you have to have to use TSN techniques so that you can calculate this deterministic behavior. Then, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean that, that that's what I think would be really interesting mm -hmm. to know yeah. is, you know, if you suddenly have to behave in a, you have to use the TSN for your control plane. Yeah. And then you can do things like you can sort of sort of switch it on and off and see what's the difference difference in the data load, um, yes. yeah. or even the error rate. What extra error rate does it use? Because um, you know I think it won't it won't be a perfect it won't be a perfect uh, solution to the maximum flow minimum latency, but it will be a more realistic solution in terms of how something be set up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you. And then the, the important thing for the reconfiguration is, is often not that it happens, that, that the configuration happens in a, in, in a time window of uh, uh, one millisecond, but that it's, it's, it's a consistent change. So when you, st when you are en enrolling these changes, that they are consistent. And then you have this time constraints, but when you, when you for example, uh, you can also uh, discuss a redundancy there, but when you just lose a packet anywhere, and this is TCP, then you don't uh, then you don't start your, your your reconfiguration, and it is delayed by another millisecond or two milliseconds. It's not a problem because these reconfigurations, you always uh, you often have have times that are in 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 the in the in the size of one hundred milliseconds. But when you're doing it, you you have to do it consistent and, and, and fast. The re reconfiguration also takes care about the application, starting the application. Uh, in this simulation, the, the applications are just sending when they start sending and uh, the, the frames get uh, um, dropped. No, before, by before the time the, the application, application yeah. starts, the reconfiguration is supposed to be finished. I guess because yes, yes. This this should be, in the real world. This should be the case. Yes, uh -huh. yeah. In the real world, this, this should be the case. That, that or, or uh, when when you uh, change the application to another device because the device is defect, then, then you have to, yeah, yeah no, you have to do the reconfigurations before the the, the second uh, application starts. Yeah, and this this are all, all uh, yeah scenarios that have to be. Uh, evaluated in in the future with this uh, model. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, also, um, we just uh, at the moment uh, this is this, this example just uh, use reconfiguration uh, just reconfigures the the QBV shaping, the egress shaping. But you uh, can also as you can reconfigure all TSN. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, parameters like, like ingress filtering or all things. Yes, that anything. Are, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. This software Actually, you could also, I mean, I'm not sure how often could it happen, but uh, you could even watch the network. And I mean, if, if this is a completely separate, I mean, so in, as, in, as in this uh, network, the, the control plane is a separate, using a separate uh, topology. So you could even, watch the switches and watch the delays and take care of if something goes wrong then you can just I don't know, reconfigure based on that because if anything fails then you might mm -hmm. need to reconfigure yeah and in our research project we, we, we are we are uh, um, our, our focus is on, on on security for this in vehicular networks mm -hmm. and uh, this is why we're exploring such thing as countermeasures for for attacks Ah, so okay. uh, we have some kind of anomaly detection with so it's which detects that but... there's an attack or a misbehavior on on, on a stream, mm -hmm. and we want to have some tools to uh, or explore tools to to enroll countermeasures in the network. Then, mm -hmm. Mm And what happens if this, uh, uh, you mentioned this ACID properties, uh, as in any transactional system, a transaction can fail. So I guess the controller can detect that if the 
two phase commit fail or something, then configuration yes. starts over or. Yeah, in, this, uh, in that case, uh, we would roll back all the modifications that succeeded before um, the one modification that failed. And so we would transfer the system back into the state it was before the transaction um, started. Ah. But uh, since we're doing the configurations to the candidate uh, modifications, uh, we would just delete uh, the candidate configuration. So this is how we do yeah, it. Basically, the candidate system. configuration is just some data structure in the in the switches until it really gets committed exactly. in, in, in like in zero time or something. <laughs> Unless yeah, so, there is a yeah. transaction yeah, failure and then they roll back. Yeah. Uh, that, that's the reason why you are able to get this atomicity be because you just have to uh, change a pointer then in the switch for yeah. for change. Of course, there's still a very low probability of that yes, yes. failing, but uh, it's very low compared to the yeah. normal. Uh, uh, Tobias, if you, if you show the sequence diagram. Uh, yeah. Um, there, there is this one phase when, when after the, you release a commit where you don't have where you have to, to where the switches have to do it yeah yeah, yeah sure so this is this is a moment where, where you yeah, it fails, you then... child out of your house and <laughs> you have to trust <laughs> but but uh, at every moment before the, the switches can communicate that no i i cannot uh, um, guarantee the the to to change the configuration at this the timestamp then you can or you you get not you don't get the timestamp accept message then you can uh, roll it back or mm -hmm. you don't have to roll back because you don't ha ha has, has any changes on the running configuration. But yeah. and the release a commit that you you know and it has, has to has to happen. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. It's very dynamic compared to what we're doing in the INET. <laughs> Yeah, and um, range, it's completely static. Everything is static. Nothing changes during. I mean, with regards to the streams and timing and anything like that, it's just. Yeah, our, our colleague Timo is is the one who is who, who is who's mainly in, into SDN techniques for in vehicle networks and and doing any yeah m m many things with with TSN and, and software defined networking and 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 also is the main developer of this SDN for core so so we can uh, use SDN and TSN in combination mm -hmm. yeah. in a simulation yeah. Any other questions? Just wondering if this could be really used. I mean, this dynamic behavior. Just wondering, this separate control frame is interesting because this mm. could be really used to make the network more robust. To, as you said, as you yeah. said, to attacks, to failures, to anything. As long it's, as it's, it's, it's a, uh, uh, yeah, it's a discussion that, that have to have to be made because. For, we are focusing on vehicular networks, and and there are some kind of communication where you maybe don't want this. Even, even don't want this because you, you say we we just do three times redundancy over over three paths or something like this and then it's it's, and hope it's for the okay rest. anyway <laughs> but um yes um even then uh, yeah yeah what what are you doing with the really time critical communication that's that's uh, never never get a hand on it or when 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 it burns, <laughs> yeah. Then you have have a tool for the for, for this situation. But yeah, it's it's a discussion that has have to be made where, where, where this is applicable for for all things that are not time critical. It is applicable, but then you don't have to change your gate configuration for this kind of configuration. Maybe other uh, TSN configurations like 
inverse bandwidth flow metering or something like this, but but not this this, this time critical stuff. But um, yeah, we are, yeah. We have to explore if, if it's technical uh, possible before you can discuss if you want to do it. Mm. Yeah, you have to have to have this this uh, this numbers what it costs. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> There's an excellent network topology, for example, like extra switches and extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, it's extra complica complication, but uh, it's way more dynamic. Because I, in my experience, and with this, the, the static configuration is always, it's kind of like, and if anything goes wrong, then it's just, uh, I mean, you, yeah. you just cross your fingers that it's still, but it's not going Running. to work. So it's. Uh, yeah. and, and you couldn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is a discussion left to be made. I'm wondering how a real car works because what I would yeah. expect as a user driving a car which uses an in-vehicle network that if that at least I expect that there would be a component which overwatches the whole network if whether if it works correctly in, in timely man, timely manner and if it's not then a lamp, a lamp is highlighted or something that please don't use this car because it's not safe anymore because who knows what i don't know with the real latency increased like tenfold or something and you're gonna crash the car i don't know if they do it actually in in, in a real car yeah. or just cross their fingers so that it... they just start to use uh, ethernet backbones in cars so so till now it's, it's just can bus buses can bus. mostly can buses and um, it's very uh, yeah at a very different standpoint at the moment but yeah, they are discussing they're discussing these things. What what what's uh, safety and security is, is is needed, and there are some regulations that are uh, new regulations that are, that they have to do software updates and support for for the lifetime of vehicles. Yeah, and it's a it's a difficult so problem. Yeah. It's, so it's, this, the three configurations when the when the vehicle is 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 in uh, is parking, they this would be they have to do it some kind of reconfigurations update they have to do it but um this is this is a this is a technique for doing it at runtime so yeah it's it's a different yeah it's, that's true. and 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 they yeah they just starting such discussions so the same goes for redundancy it's yes. nice to have a redundant network and streams like that but uh when your redundancy is reduced because there there are failures in the system, if the system doesn't actually notice that this, mm. then as a user I would be like, hey man, it's not redundant anymore. So <laughs> I don't know. It's a, at least please notify me that your car is yes, 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 yes. got a little bit closer to actually not working pro properly. So yeah they, they start they, they start to have more and more software problems so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's 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 getting yeah, they, 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 it's yeah. the the the, the uh, uh, automakers have have to start to to change to a software company and then yeah. they are able to handle I can this, only this imagine problems. the versioning you know that like that like in dls just imagine the same thing in cars it's like yeah all kinds of different versions of devices in the cars because they updated yeah. the production system at some mm. point and then they change the software. And then when you try to update the software configuration, then you'll have to take into account all kinds of different versions of devices and networks and topology. And mm. it's, <laughs> it's an absolute version. And you can't make it, I mean, if you, yeah, if you accidentally incorrectly configure a car, you're actually risking life. So it's not like, in normal computer science when nothing happens maybe the software crashes but who cares and you just mm -hmm. restart the software. Mm -hmm. yeah and they and they are heavily regulated to to yes. also do this so, yeah. so they, they have to yeah yeah it's kind of crazy that uh, it's, it's not it's not the same thing but it's kind of crazy that tesla is actually downloading a new drive new self-driving software to your car and it's there they are they yeah are, they, they even flash flash the firmware of, of, of the smallest ecus in your car yeah and they are confidently yeah. confident enough so that they do it with yeah. millions of cars i mean it's i have this very strange idea but sometimes it's just like 
a news will come out that a million cars is not working anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, what? The brakes yeah. <laughs> because of yeah. software misconfiguration. So it's dangerous. <laughs> I guess they have good simulators or something. Yeah. Um, they are also a, a little freer uh, what, what this trust is. Uh, they are able that, that their first uh, new Tesla Model S plate edition is, is just burning. Yeah, this is the first version he, he sells mm -hmm. uh, uh, burned up started to burn, burn yeah. that's not a great, great problem for, for, for Tesla. But if, 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 if VW, the, <laughs> the first ID4 ID would burn it. it, it yeah, for a start, for a new company, time. you can so, say, hey, we are new, yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah, a little yeah. bit they, they have this, buggy, this, this, uh, it's going to be better. Yeah. <laughs> but for SW's OEM, you have to make, have to do it right first. I mean, yes. you, yes. don't, you don't have a second chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this uh, big uh, callback in America right now for burning electric cars. Uh, uh, which which car is it? Don't you? Mm, I, don't you know? I don't know. It's in the US. Uh, uh, it's, I don't. I know. It's like a million cars. Like, not a million, but a few hundred thousand cars. They have to replace all the batteries in all cars. <laughs> Is it the Bolt? Chevy? I don't know. It's wrong. It could be. Or maybe the board. What? Pretty cool. It's going to cost a lot of money. Yes, that's that's also why 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 uh, the W uh, the VW cars are, are are limited in range because they are. Uh, they're making Much it more safer. Conversative, what yeah. the what's the accumulator and the, uh, uh, the safety of it. But the more this software in the car has, is the biggest the bigger the problem you might have because you have to choose where if you if you can do over the air updates, then you open up for security, all, all kinds of firmware. <laughs> It's a, it's a big security problem then. But if you can't can do over the air updates, then you, if you have any problem in your cars, then it's very expensive to replace the software because then you have to recall the cars and do it manually yeah. and stuff like that. At the moment where they started, they, they, they started in the past, uh, connect internet to these systems and it's not a closed system anymore. Yeah. You don't have a choice. You have to do some kind of, updates and currently they are you have to get to, to to a workshop or something like this to at least it's safe to get, get updates <laughs> and this is, safe. this is also a security uh, uh, thing but uh, yeah we have to do updates when you open it's the crazy system. if you think about it that actually over the air uh, is that what you're saying that they can over the air update all the i mean they can so the new, yeah, also, also the VW, the new uh, ID3 and ID4 uh, are able to update over the air, uh -huh. but they do it uh, while parking. So I assume they could say that if if, if if the network could be a DSM network, then and you could also reconfigure the DSM scheduling and yes. streams mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you would have to because if you come up with some new features. Which needs some new com communication between some devices in the network, like you know. But, uh, yeah, maybe you, you even have to do it in, in future if you just install an app to your car, which has some, which sells some feature. Yeah. 
but uh, we will see. Uh, I, I think in the long term, this would be reality, but but the, the, the question is how long it, it how long they are developing this till they are tr trusting these technologies and. So there are no no cars on the road right now which uses TSM inside in vehicle. Mm. I cars which you can actually purchase. Just, um, uh, I don't know if this is no car, but. Um, Well, there, there are the, the there are hardware which, which could be used for this, also for small series, but um, I I don't know a, a car which actually uses it. Maybe some new high class Audi or something like this, but but I don't know any car which uses this. Even Tesla uses traditional technologies for this. Mm -hmm. It's, it's it's expensive enough when when they want to change the uh, anything on the car it would be even expensive for them. Yeah. They have to use the parts and and, and the and the, the, the yeah, that's one problem with this uh, software defined uh, control plane is that you need to have this extra layer of network, an extra devices, extra wiring, extra unless you do it in the same network, which is being controlled but, but but the wire it's wiring at the moment is is, is on another level with, with with bus technologies and something like this so when they use a simple a simple flat ethernet network they they change 20 cables to one ah, so okay. um, the wiring get get massively reduced by just using either by using ethernet it's uh -huh. just a they they get one gigabit per second over a single twisted pair unshielded yeah, single right. twisted pair so it's it's uh, uh, a very reduced harness. Yeah. So a lot of streams can fit into this. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I cannot imagine without uh, video streams, how could you feel, feel like one gigabit in a car? The, the, like, they are uh, discussing uh, of 10 gigabit. 10 gigabit. Uh, 10 gigabit and more. They, they are, they are want to, for autonomous driving, they, they want to, to send raw video and laser scanner data with four gigabit per second or something like this. Four gigabits per second. <laughs> so they, uh, uh, they, they the are, people out there that, 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 that say uh, one gigabit is, is not enough. They, they, they are at, at 10 or 100 gigabit links. And uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. We will see. <laughs> interesting and complicated. <laughs> Yeah, but but when when you when you uh, want to high resolution raw data from 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 cameras, without any kind of of, of com compression. Yeah, I wrote I wrote it as a lot. Yeah. yeah. If you want to have like like fifty frames per second. Or yeah, second, high frame rates for for if high resolution do, raw data. Is... Yeah, high resolution, I mean, yeah. But why 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 raw data? Why is that important? Why not? Because we already have hardware to. I, I think because the, 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 these fusion technologies are uh, centered at any at any PC in the. And I don't know why why I don't want to do what they, while they are don't want to do compression, but but I I can think of the. Because they don't want to that there are artifacts. Mm. That are the reason for not detecting. Uh, 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 people or, or other cars or, or bikes or something like that. Uh, How would in such a system some work in if you go, I mean, if you have a car, let's say, and you go shopping and buy some extra additional device which you want to connect to your car and it needs to <clears throat> have some extra bandwidth allocated in the network and who's going to, uh, how is it going to work? Say you go into um, a shop and just buy some device, which I don't know. I, I think you are not able anymore to do it by yourself. So you kind of just connect it to, to just uh, connect a device. Uh, there are two reasons. If you have a, have a normal car today, you have this bus, and then you can just add it to the bus. Mm -hmm. And it, it can read and write on the bus like it wants. So you can add, add features to this device. 
but but I think uh, uh, if there are open Ethernet ports that are not connected in a car you buy, then they are disabled. Ah, I see. I <laughs> Probably, was, uh, yes. They are just disabled. <laughs> they just don't and, want to and, risk uh, it that you, that you just connect something <laughs> there and so, so, so you, breaks so you have to reconnect an existing port, and I think that then they were, were d d doing things like uh, 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 Mac authentication and, and something like this. And, ah, yeah. and, uh, it might happen. Yeah. It might also be written somewhere in your license that you cannot do, actually do this. I mean, it's not allowed. So if you do this, then all guarantees lost. Yeah. So Tesla Tesla detects if, if you're doing something and at at their network level. Mm -hmm. If you're just uh, playing with with, with their with their in vehicle network, then then they get a message and maybe disable your car or something. And then is this this kind of system, this kind of uh, reconfiguration, is, is this used in uh, industrial? Or, or, I mean, uh, I'm not so much in the industrial used? context. In industrial context, huh? I, I'm not so much in industrial context. Ah, okay. I, I I think it could yeah it could be used, but but I, I'm not not so much in the industrial context. I. They use TSN, also the industry, the industry uses TSN. Yeah, sure. And, but but I, I don't know how the whole dynamic they are configuring the network. I would assume that in an industrial setting, <clears throat> the production line is changed sometimes. So it's probably not every day, but. So you, one way or another, you have to be able to reconfigure, but it's not necessarily that dynamic. Yeah, maybe it's also just application dependent. And if you're doing a nuclear reactor, then you <laughs> don't do it. And if you're doing some kind of production yeah. line, then it's okay to do it. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> you cannot do this in a nuclear reactor. I don't know. <laughs> Back in the last century, when I was graduating, I wrote a software for a big uh, oil refinery uh, control system. It was a software that uh, actually gathered the data from the sensors and the actuators and put it up to the to this large, you know, display in the control room. Which uh, mm -hmm. well, it actually wasn't a display; it was a it's a quite mechanic stuff with <laughs> lots of small lights and, and it and but at, at that, that time it was really well i would say that it was really primitive because it just iterated through all the sensors and got the data and then sent it to the display and that was it and it, it, it i think it the iteration took for like almost like a second or something so there was a second delay so if something went wrong it took a second, a second yeah. to, to be displayed on the on the large mm. <laughs> control, whatever display. Yeah, it was a long time ago. I guess it's not used anymore. <laughs> yeah, but, but but what were they using for for communicating with the sensors? Uh, it, it was used by the uh, the people who control the whole. Uh, no, what technology are they? Was it just think, just some bus? Or? I think the sensors. I don't don't remember because the, my software was just looking into the database and sending oh, okay. data yeah. to the to the mm. display control to this, room. Uh, yeah, yeah like into the control room. But uh, I, I have no idea. But to me, this delay was kind of surprising. Like, one second. <laughs> One second extra day. But anyway, because it's it always always uh, involves some humans, so the human yes. controller would notice that something is go went wrong and then react accordingly. So it's several seconds anyway. <clears throat> Uh, 
uh, I think. Yeah, and yeah, we are. Yeah, we can say we finished. Yeah, we are finished. So stop recording. Thanks again for your presentation.